thank you, Lord God, for your presence here in this house this morning, Lord God, in the precious, matchless, and mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. And so this morning, I wanted to share um, this morning uh, with you all this, this great morning, 12 years of um, us senior pastoring, we've learned some really valuable lessons, I'll say. Um, 12 years is probably a drop in the bucket for some of you, but 12 years of senior pastoring has allowed some gray hairs to come out of this head prematurely, amen, and so I get to cover them up. My husband does not, but it is what it is, and so we, we're just going to do this gracefully, amen, in the name of Jesus, but in those 12 years and raising four children, and I still work a full-time job, and so uh, making this all happen for the glory of God is, 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 takes a lot of energy and strength. Today, I want to talk about some of those things that have allowed um, Pastor and I to develop up um, some patience because 12 years of ministry of senior pastoring will do that. Patience, um, um, t uh, thickening your skin, amen, discernment, um, exemplifying consistency, integrity, compassion, empathy, you know, all those things as a pastor, you have to have them equally um, uh, activated at all times. Amen. You don't get to waver one for the other. You don't get to wake up in the morning and say, today I'll be empathetic, but not compassionate. You have to be all things at all times, whether you feel like it or you don't feel like it. Amen. In season and out of season, we are ready. Amen. And so this gray hair right here says empathy. This one says compassion. This one says discernment. This one says pray, 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 pray. Amen. <laughs> but this morning, if you would allow me the privilege, um, Pastor, to Beatrice, to, to be um, candid, to be genuine in some of those experiences, and to encourage you all for, I don't want to discourage you, I want to encourage you, because there's so many great things attached um, to ministry, but I wanted to take my time to encourage you on something specifically, um, something that I love to look at every time I step off the plane to Florida, amen, and that is the palm tree. We, your theme for this whole year has been about flourishing, amen, um, but the Bible is specific when correlating flourishing to a palm tree. There's a direct correlation with those two things, and so today I want to focus on the palm tree. The palm tree is the favorite thing that I have when I look at when I get off the plane, amen. And so this morning, very quickly, I want to go over six characteristics to flourish like the palm tree. Six characteristics to flourish like the palm tree. Amen. And I cater this specifically for leaders, ministers, aspiring leaders. So it's not just for the believer, but more so for the aspiring leader. Amen. And many of the significant things that we'll see throughout the scriptures um, have involved trees in and of itself. And so God does not take trees lightly. He uses them uh, frequently in the scriptures. We see it first represented itself and sin originated from eating the fruit from a forbidden tree. We see in the scriptures also that the first the first clothing or the first covering were leaves from a fig tree. So I just want you to hear this word tree a few times. God promised Abraham a son where under an oak tree. So do you, do you see the trend of this word here? Elijah's depressed, suicidal, frustrated, discouraged, and he's sitting under a juniper tree. Uh, the Bible says the Ark of the Covenant was made out of a acacia tree. And so trees are significant. They're significant in the Bible. But today I really wanted to zone in on the palm tree. And then finally, we cannot be amiss to consider that old rugged cross. Amen, which is a tree in and of itself. Amen. Amen. Revelations chapter 22 and verse 2 says something powerful. It says, in the midst of the street on either side of the river was the tree of life. It bare 12 manner of fruit. 12 manner of fruit. It was fruitful on every side, the Bible says, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were healing for the nations. 
Healing for the nations. If you've never looked at that scripture before, I pray you'll never look at it the same again. Amen. Healing for the nations. Matthew 21 talks about Jesus himself making his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And the Bible says that they all came out and they began to wave what? palm branches at the Lord Jesus at the coming Messiah and they waved the branches and they shouted Hosanna Hosanna Lord save us we need a king we need we need a new ruler to save us from the evil reign and so even in that triumphal entry and the waving of the palm trees, it says two things to me. They were celebrating this coming Messiah. They were celebrating what was to be the new, the new king, the king of kings. But it also spoke to me about salvation. Salvation, Lord, save us now. Save us now. And I pray that that still rings true today, that as we, as we lift our hands and we, wave, and we wave them, that we say, God, save us, God. Spare us, Lord God. You are our king the bible says in psalm 92 and 12 that the righteous shall flourish how like the palm tree the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree and so you have to think about this palm tree you have to think about why God deems it so important? Why does he make it so relevant? Why do you get to live in Florida and be around these palm trees all the time? <laughs> I envy you in that aspect. Amen. Praise God. So six things I wanted to cover with you very quickly. First is this. The palm tree breaks bands. The palm tree breaks bands. Other trees don't break bands. The palm tree is distinct. It's different than any other. Amen. It's distinct in the way that it, it can dig into the ground. It cannot be restricted. It's not conformed. Amen. It's, it's different. It, it, makes, it allows itself to not just conform to whatever is happening around it. It doesn't just go with the flow. It doesn't just go with status quo. Amen. It's a a characteristic that every minister, leader, pastor, apostle, evangelist, missionary, evangelist, every leader has to adapt this characteristic into their life. You don't have the privilege to conform. You have to be distinct. You have to be um, separate. You have to stand out. Amen. You, you can't go with status quo. You can't listen to the flow of the subcultures in your day and time. You have to stand firm, stand tall, stay consistent be integral we break the bands amen we don't go with the status quo we can't just embrace what culture tells us to embrace the, the the word of God does not change it's forever established amen and so that's what we say that's what we stand on and that's what we will preach amen ministers and God of the gospel we have to not be intimidated of that we have to stand firm in that we have to know this thing we have to be confident in this thing we can't be intimidated to preach this truth because here's the truth of the matter and for every preacher this is what we have to remind ourselves when we get discouraged um, that on the other side of that sermon, on the other side of that word that you release, I love when one of the pastors said last night that you have to listen. That was a good word because it's, it's, it's vital. On the other side of that word may be something you have heard, but someone out there has never heard it before. And for them, that's life. That word becomes life. It instantly, it can break a yoke. It can break a bondage. It can break a chain. Just like it did for you when you got saved. There's still somebody out there who has not heard this gospel. And perhaps not have heard it in the way that it can be delivered, that it ministers to them. And so that we have a responsibility. We have to break that band. We have to not conform. We have to preach with boldness, preach with confidence, preach understanding that wherever the word goes, God goes with that. And so maybe it's coming out of my mouth, but there's a big God standing behind me that stands behind his word. And I don't have to worry. I don't have to fret. I don't have to be moved. I know God is with me. Why? Because this is his word and God honors his word above everything else it's the word that breaks chains amen? amen so we break bands it's the characteristic of the palm tree we have to set the captive free 
And we're not going to do it with vain words. We're not going to do it with, with empty, empty promises. We're going to do it behind with the word of God. We have to set the bondage free in the name of Jesus. And listen, don't worry about being persecuted. Jesus already told you you would get persecuted. He already forewarned you. Don't get weary in your well-doing. Know that you will get some slack. You might get critiqued. Someone might try to come and discourage you, but that's okay because I didn't come in your name. I came in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so I'm not looking for your acceptance. I'm not looking for you to pat me on the back. It's okay. I'm coming in the might of the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather have the covering of God any day than the applause of man. Amen. Number two. Another characteristic. The palm tree will bend, but it won't break. And if you live here in Florida, you know that's right. The palm tree will bend, but it will not break. The palm tree has a distinct characteristic about it that it knows how to withstand trials it knows how to to bend all the way over in under pressure but just let that wind subtle just let that wind die down and slowly you will see that palm tree begins to just come right back up the winds of the storms will 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 uproot any ordinary tree as a matter of fact a week and a half ago, every Wednesday in New Jersey, it rains. We don't know why. But every Wednesday, 10 minutes before our service, torrential rains come. And it's comical now. We just laugh. We go, okay, God, we got it. We, we see the trend. But what is interesting and different from here, we don't didn't even get category three, four, one or two um, um, storms in Jersey. We just get rain. But what's interesting, in our town, it's called Tree City. And last Wednesday, or the Wednesday before, or past few Wednesdays, on my way home from work, the same tree I saw standing when I left, when I came driving home, I'm talking about 100-year-old trees. Big, rooted, out to the sidewalks, breaking the street, breaking the sidewalks. Very rooted trees are toppled down. Why? Not because they don't have strength. They have strength, but they don't have the flexibility. They can't withstand the winds. So the wind comes, the whole thing just comes down, lands on houses, pulls up sidewalks. Crews are out there trying to get electricity back on. Why? Because it does not have that ability to withstand a storm. We need that characteristic, amen? We have to have it. it, it it's, it's amazing to me. But ministry can be weighty. Ministry can be weighty. Not, and I don't mean that in a discouraging way. I mean that because of the responsibility that comes behind ministry. Ministry can be sometimes taxing on your energy. It could, be, it could be taxing on your energy, uh, sometimes even on your body, because again, we have such a risk. We want to do this so beautiful for God that we give it 100%, 100% of the time. And I don't think God expects anything less, but I still live in this, in this mortal body. And sometimes it can be weighty. But what I love about God is that he is perfect strength in our weakness. He's perfect. So where I cease, he begins. Where I cannot, he takes over. Where I just can't no more, God says, I got your back. I got your back. Amen. And so sometimes if we're honest, if I'm speaking to the right people this morning, we can develop feelings of feeling depleted. Sometimes we have moments of discouragement. And I pray that I, you allow me the freedom, Pastor Peters, to be candid this morning. Sometimes we can feel feelings of feeling depleted. Amen. Um, but in our church, we declared 2019 to be the year of the uncommon. The year of the uncommon. And can I tell you, we have watched a lot of uncommon unfold in, in, our, in our church, and our ministry. And the ministry is growing. But what the congregation doesn't know sometimes that with the uncommon blessing, with the uncommon miracle, with the uncommon favor, with the uncommon uh, uh, promises of God, with all of God operating and all of those uncommon great things that we have prayed for comes an uncommon attack. Because uncommon trial, because uncommon accusation comes in uncommon uh, 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 disease, amen? And so while we have had great success in ministry, I've also experienced the most uncommon trials I've ever had in 12 years. So it's been a year of hills, valleys, hills, 
valley, sometimes I go, God, which one are we going to have today? We want, are we hill? Are we valley? Just let me know so I can prepare my soul. Amen. But I will tell you that the hills far outweigh the valleys for us, for sure. It makes every valley experience, every desert experience um, uh, uh, withstanding because I know God supports us amen and so as leaders as pastors as apostles as evangelists we can bend but we will not break amen i might be struck down but i am not utterly destroyed and as long as i have two breaths in these lungs i will give you praise i'll go down fighting if i die i go in glory amen but his name will be praise amen to the ends of the earth hallelujah Number three, another characteristic of the palm tree. The palm tree not only survives, but it flourishes in the desert. The palm tree doesn't just survive. The Bible says that it flourishes. It flourishes in the desert. And I want you to hear what I'm saying about that because to me that makes no sense. It just makes no sense that any tree would ever flourish where there is no water. When the tree lives off, it doesn't ask for a lot. It just asks for water. But in the middle of a desert, it doesn't only just survive. It doesn't just make it. The Bible says or allows us to know, nature allows us to know that it thrives. It flourishes. It excels. It progresses. Where? In a desert. It makes no sense. But look at how God does it. There's so much analogy here that we can learn as leaders. The roots of the palm tree find moisture deep, deep, deep below the burning sand. So off the surface, off the cuff, the sand is too hot to even walk on. But here is the palm tree digging deeper into the sand. And it'll keep going until it finds the place of nourishment. It'll keep go pressing it. It'll go deeper and deeper and deeper. And it is persistent. It's tenacious. It does not give up it's relentless and it thrives the bible says it thrives it progresses in the desert as ministers of the gospel as leaders in this especially in this generation and in this day and age we have to go deeper we have to go deeper we cannot just look at our surrounding and then throw up our hands and say well this is a hot place and this is too much so i'm out of here no on the contrary, that is the moment when the minister is supposed to look at everyone and say, I know what I know what statistics say. I know what everything around us tells us. However, we're going to dig deeper. The minister always has to have a word. The minister always has to be able to have the ability within his or herself to find something deeper. We have to go deeper. We have to be prayer warriors. We have to pray without ceasing. We need that discernment. We need insights. We need a word in season and out of season. We, we, we study theology, but we, we need neology. <laughs> neology, and I know that's not a word, but we just made it up today. Neology, that's the study of pray, 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 pray. Why? Because everything around me looks desolate. Everything looks dry. It doesn't look to be prospering. But we are called to see, amen, with our spiritual eyes what everyone else can't see. That's the characteristic of the palm tree. I love the leadership of Moses because Moses teaches us something about being able to have foresight. Moses in his leadership goes with the people for a time. Moses then goes before the people. And then we have Moses on the mountain, which is the extreme level, the greatest level of ministry. I'm not there yet. But there's a time where we're walking with the people and we're feeding them, we're nourishing them, where we're investing into them, we're spending time with them, we're fellowshipping with them. But there comes a moment in ministry where every leader, every aspiring um, pastor, leader, evangelist, apostle, where there's a time where God will begin to separate you and let you go before the people. Why? Because he knows we need a vision. He knows that we have to always be one step ahead. He knows that we have to have insight and in, 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 you know, an in, uh, inner word that is louder to us than any muttering behind us, than any complaining um, person behind us. There's a time that he separates you and it's in in that season that you will flourish you will flourish in the name of Jesus 
So we have to always be learning. We have to always study to show ourselves approved. We have to always be reading and, 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 and looking to invest into ourselves. You can never have enough books. I saw Pastor Peter's library. I saw some books in there that look good. Some good books in there. But you can never read enough. Amen. We have books we haven't even read yet, but we said when we get to these, they're there. Amen. On reserve. Number four. A group of palm trees form an oasis. A group of palm trees form an oasis. This is a great characteristic. It's been very uh, um, helpful to Pastor Edgar and I because we need that. Amen. A palm tree by itself can provide some shade in the desert. It might, it might provide some comfort for a little bit, for a little while. But if it forms an oasis, do you know what an oasis? It's a clutter of palm trees together, a band of palm trees that are cluttered together. And so it's not one shade, it might be 150 banded together that has a common purpose, that all bend in the same direction. Every time the wind comes, we bend together. When the trial stops, we stand up tall. We provide shade together, amen? It's very vital in ministry that we don't even attempt to do this alone. Amen. A group is so much better. We know the word of God, right? One can put a thousand to flight, but two puts 10,000 to flight. And so why would we not want to take advantage of agreement, of unity, of harmony, of, of team thinking, of networking? We need each other in ministry. We can't think that we have all the revelation by ourselves, that we're the only ones that know the truth. There is so much more that we can do together than we can do on our own. And so for us, that what has been influential for us is building teams. In our church, there was a time we, we, we did almost everything. And I'm sure, Pastor Peter, you guys can identify. You have to do all. You just have to do everything because you don't have anybody yet. Been there, done that. But you, as you progress the church, as you grow the church, you'll be pulled in different directions. And so when we started our church, we had two ministries, the preaching ministry and children's ministry. That's it. That's all we needed to start. Today, we have over 20 ministries. Amen. But with that growing, with that flourishing, with that expansion, with that progression, we had to get with a band of other believers, build people, get a good team, good team to be able to help us along the way. Because as the need and the demand grows, so will your need for good volunteers. So will your need be for good um, ministers or orators of the gospel. So will it be to have good um, deacons and elders and team leaders and ministry leaders. You need that to flourish, amen? Um, a great man of God, Sam Chan, he said something that he says over and over again. He said, you, you double your volunteers, you double your congregation. Wow. And I get it. The anointing is needed. The, the word of God is needed. But I'm talking about what needs to be coupled with that word of God is volunteers. Um, the more we get, we notice we get, we get an influx of people. Amen. And I don't say that to say we just want to fill chairs and have a big church. I say that because with more people, that's more souls for the kingdom. And that's how I look at it. God, I, I want to win souls for your glory. And I hear God always saying, then get more people. You need more help. You can't be everything for everybody. You'll die. You, you, you'll kill yourself. How about you get together so we can put 10,000 a flight? Amen. Amen. And so we want, to win more, we want to win more souls. In 2020, we've decided that we're going to start life groups so that people can feel connected to something and not feel isolated. Amen. Um, we, we're at a good place in our church where um, I don't know everybody that comes on Sunday anymore. I used to know every single face. And I used to text who didn't come to church. I didn't see you today. I didn't see you today. Are you okay? Blessed be the name of Jesus. Where are you? But today, I don't have that privilege anymore. Amen. And, and that's for the glory of God. But we're starting the life group so that we can assure that everybody feels connected to something fellowship is important amen and so that oasis of the palm trees we need that we need each other I'm happy that I have um, Pastor Peters and, and Pastor Beatrice that that I know keep us in our prayers in this corner of Florida amen and you can know that in Jersey there's always one standing in the gap for your ministry also so we need each other in that aspect amen the power of of agreement can do so much 
Bible says in Psalm chapter 133, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. How? In unity. Unity. In our church, we try to keep our vision really simple and very visible. It comes up on our screens every single Sunday. It's all over our website, the vision of the church, the heartbeat of the church, the desire of the church, the, the, the direction of the church. It's simple. It's lit. L-I-T. Amen. It's legacy, impact, and truth. That's simple. Legacy, impact, and and truth and we say it all the time in all of our membership classes all of our leaders meetings I re will randomly walk up to one of our leaders and say what's the vision of this church tell me what you're working towards because if we know what we're working towards we won't skip a beat amen and so keeping that vision before our leaders keeping the vision before your volunteers is important because they want to serve but they have to understand what their what the common goal is Amen. And while we may know it as the ministers, we have to communicate that to the body of Christ. Amen. Number five. The older the palm tree, the sweeter the fruit. And I received that one in the name of Jesus. The older the palm tree, the sweeter the fruit. The rest of that verse in Psalm 92, 12, and when you have some time, read it again. Psalm 92, 12, the whole part of that verse says, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And those that be planted in the house of the Lord, and it's literal, the house. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord, what's going to happen for them? They sh yes, they shall bring forth fruit in their old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. And I don't know about you, but I would love that as these gray hairs progress and as my years progress, it, it is a good, it is, it, is, it, is, it is delightful for my soul to know this scripture because I don't worship in vain. I don't serve in vain. I'm not investing in lives in vain. The Bible has clearly allowed every a minister to know that as you lead, as you invest, that as I bring forth fruit, I shall flourish. I shall flourish. Come on, say, I'm flourishing. Look at me. I'm flourishing. Amen. If God could just reverse that clock, right, and take 10 years off in some areas. But I also believe that God is redeeming the time. Amen. I believe that in your flourishing, you'll be able to do leaps and bounds and accomplish things in a short period of time that you've been praying for for years. And in a moment, in a rainbow moment, in a Kairos moment, God will advance it because of your flourishing, because of the righteousness that you've displayed in, in moving forward in this gospel. Amen. And listen, as leaders and ministers, we grow more mature. So when, when it says it gets sweeter as it gets older, we should become, I'll interpret that word sweeter as wiser, as more mature. So as I progress in this gospel, amen, the thing that I called a trial on year one that I got saved is not a trial to me anymore. Amen. That's, that's easy. I could get through that in a prayer but the things I face today would have killed me 12 years ago amen so as I progress in this gospel as I mature in this gospel I get sweeter I get wiser I get more I develop tougher skin I have a, a better withstanding amen and so in that doing so, we should become, as leaders, master executors, I call it. Um, quick problem solvers. I don't have to think 25 minutes or a day about this. I can tell you how we're going to do this right now. You're going to do this. You're going to go here. You're going to go back there. We're going to get this together. And in 10 minutes, we'll meet right back here and do a debrief. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't, you, we don't have time to have a meeting. We got to work. We got to get this done. We're trying, to, we're trying to advance the kingdom. Amen. And I don't have time to fight and fuss and ask you what you think or how you feel. Let's go. Let's go. And in my church, I say that all the time. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And they say, come on, pastor. Let's go. Amen. Um, I, I was born and raised in New York. And so I don't know how to sit down long. I don't know how to talk slow. I don't know how to walk slow. I don't know how to do everything I do. I do fast. I talk. I have a lot of energy. But when I crash in the bed, it's over. But while I am awake, amen, we're working, we're moving, we're talking, we're communicating, we're making decisions, we're executing. We're not going to just sit around. We got to move. 
We have too much to do in the time that we have here. Amen. And so in doing that, we also have to be apt to change. We have to be okay with change. We have to say within ourselves, I know we've all always done it this way, but you know what I found out? That's not working anymore. So let's change it up. Let's create a new method. I'm not stuck. Let's go. I don't want to be stuck like Chuck. I want to make sure that whatever we do will be, will be, um, will be productive. Amen. And so we have to be apt to change. I remember talking to someone not so long ago and said, yeah, you know, I know we have to be apt to change, you know, our methods, but you know, God doesn't change. And I said, of course, he doesn't have to change. He's the epitome of perfect leadership. He never has to change. He is who we're trying to aspire to be like. He doesn't have to change his methods because he's perfection. We are not perfected yet, so we have to still reinvent ourselves. We have to evolve. We have to see what is better, see what we can change within ourselves to make ministry to not be so weighty. We have to grab people that can do what we can't do. Amen? And so I have to be apt to change. He's perfect, but I'm not there yet. I have a long, long, long way to go. And so yet in all of these things, we have to be still empathetic to our volunteers. We have to demonstrate genuine love for them. We have to still tell them how they're needed, how they're vital, and how I'm thankful for having you on this team. Did I tell you how I appreciate your ministry? Did I tell you how much I love you? Every Sunday morning, before I take the pulpit to exhort, before this pastor takes the pulpit, I make it my business. And this is what I do today. Today, I couldn't always do this. I I go to every camera, everybody in the sound booth, every usher, every greeter, and I'm I'm greeting them. Good morning, 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 good morning. And and I will tell you that sometimes I think I need them more than they need me. Amen. But I love that we have that quick, even if it's just a good morning. I'm not sharing words with you. I'm not gonna testify. I'm not gonna have a meeting with we're not gonna we're not having this conversation right now. Good morning. That's enough for me. Praise the Lord. And let's keep it moving. Amen. But I, I've, I've, I've learned through ministry that giving our face sometimes means a lot. Amen. Showing us that smile, just taking one minute to acknowledge them can go a long, long, long way. Amen. Pastor doesn't always have the freedom to do it, but I make it my business because we are one. Amen. And I say, hey, behalf of Pastor Egg and myself, I just want to give you a hug. Amen. Praise God. Um, I've learned that I'm empathetic. I demonstrate genuine love and I can't be rigid. Amen. I have to not be monotonous or, or mundane. I need to keep that momentum going so that we can thrive together. We, we have learned, Pastor Egg and I, to shake things off quickly. Sometimes we we get bad news right before he, he has to preach. And I say, shake it off, honey. Just shake it off. Just preach the word. It's okay. God got it. God got it. By the time he finishes preaching, pastor just want to give you an update. We worked it out. The sound is up. The social media is back up page. We don't know what happened. We shut off the system, turned it back up. Everything is functioning. Everything is good. The word of God preached. Souls got saved. And, and amen. And God got the glory. Amen. So sometimes we just got to shake it off. Tell somebody, just shake it off. Shake it off. The Bible says in Romans 8 that the trials of life should conform us to the image of Christ. So every time I'm pressed, I'm pressed to conform to be more like him. And in that time of of trial, we are tempted to let the real attitude of us come out. But what the word tells us that in that time of pressing, Amen. That time of, 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 of trial, it should conform us to be more like him. Amen. And so on my final uh, point this morning, uh, my last characteristic is the palm tree will not burn. It's not a tree known to burn. It's, it's amazing to me. And my mind doesn't really understand this because we, see, we burn trees all the time in Jersey for firewood. We're always throwing firewood in our, in our fireplaces. Um, the majority of the homes in Jersey have a fireplace. They're, they're brick fireplaces because it gets cold. And so the firewood is important to us. And a lot of the homes in Jersey get termites sometimes because they have stacks of firewood on the sides of their homes. And so it is amazing to me that the palm tree is so distinct that if you try to cut it down and throw it in a fireplace, you just wasted your time. You know why? Because it's not consumed like the other trees. 
It's not like everybody else. So what burns you, don't burn me. What burns you out, don't burn me out. Amen. What makes you overwhelmed, don't overwhelm me. Because I flourish. Why? Because I'm like the palm tree. I have developed these characteristics. It has cost me through years to learn these things, to develop these things in me. But what used to take me out before, what used to give me stress and give me anxiety and, and try to, oh, doesn't do that for me anymore. Why? Because the Bible says, the word of God says that the righteous shall flourish. How? Like the palm tree. Don't ever look at the palm tree the same way after today. Amen. And so what consumes them should not consume you. You're supposed to be separate. Amen. And so some, some of you have people in your house, your, your extended family, and they stress out and they look at you and go, why aren't you so stressed out? And you say, because I'm like the palm tree. I bend, but I don't break. I might feel like I'm getting burned, but I'm not being consumed. And what burns you out, don't burn me out. And I'm not going to be like you because misery loves company. And I refuse to be miserable today. I woke up with favor on my side. I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. I'm victorious in Christ Jesus. I've already prayed. I've already worshipped. I'm going to have a good day. Goodbye. Amen. The tree will not burn. And what consumes everyone should not consume you. We don't have the luxury to burn out that quickly. Amen. God is causing us to be tenacious. He's looking for men and women of God who will, who will stand the test of time. My pastor always says this. Nothing is great until it's been great a long time. Don't call, call it good, but don't call it great until it's been great for a consistent long time. It has to show fruit. It has to bear fruit. It has to show its integrity over time. You ever meet people that come out the gate running with a vision, but then a, a quick, they just burn out that quickly and you don't know what happened. They just fell off the face of the earth. But God is looking for consistency. And so here's what I want to say to every minister, to anybody who's listening, to anybody who's watching. Avoid burnouts at all costs. Avoid burnouts at all costs. Change your element if you have to. I tell my husband, get up from your desk, go outside, go take a drive, go on the golf course, go change your element, go get fresh air, shut the books down, shut the computer off. Let's go. Let's, let's go get ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it don't sound spiritual, but it's deep. It's deeper than you think. As a matter of fact, it's necessary. Amen? Change your element. Smile a little bit more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen? And so my smile tells you that I'm enjoying this walk, that I'm loving my God, that I'm loving this journey, and I would not give it up for the world. Appreciate what is functioning in the ministry. Instead of thinking about everything that's going wrong, thank God for the things that are going right. The lights are on. The speakers are working. The congregation is here. The cameras are on. I got my health. Amen? My lungs are operating. Praise God. Go on retreats. Get away. When I say get out of your element, I mean way out of your element. Leave your neighborhood. Get out of your town. Go somewhere else where you don't know anybody. Go on retreats. We need to relax sometimes. Dream often. Amen. Pastor and I have learned the hard way. We thought it was work, 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 and we forgot that we had to invest into each other. And so we learned this the hard way. And, and, and I'll say this because I know this about my husband. He is a phenomenal visionary. He has the ability to just get a download from heaven. I am his sidekick. I tell him, tell me what God said. And I will, I will help him make that happen. I'm the one that applies the download from him. So I say, what did God say? All right, let's go make that work. Amen. So we work good together. So dreaming, amen, and, and spending time to get vision is necessary. When you're boggled down, you limit what God can speak to you. Because he has to override all of the million thoughts in your head going a million miles an hour. And then finally... Life will pass you by. And so enjoy your husbands. 
enjoy your wives. Don't miss the, the small moments that, that make you enjoy your family. Enjoy your grandchildren. Make them as your best source of motivation for you and for what you do. Amen. We preach this gospel, but we are creating legends in the making. We're investing into our children. We expect that fruit, amen, that seed to germinate. Amen. And then I just finally want to say, if you follow these things, if you follow these six characteristics, I believe that the blessing of the Lord will follow you. I believe that strength, supernatural strength will come to you. I believe that you will get fresh insights. I believe that fresh anointing will pour over you. And then finally, you will be brave. You will be strong. You'll be confident. You'll be refreshed for the next chapter of your life and your journey. Thank you for your time.